Hi folks, how are you? Hope you're all okay. So here's the um, uh, the review that if you caught my last video, um, just a little um, channel update which I did the other day. Um, I said I was going to try and do two book reviews this week, um, or flipping the page, turning the page. Uh, sorry, uh, bookmark my book reviews. <laughs> um, so this is the first one. This is the one that I've been uh, after for a very long time. I saw on uh, Mig's website that he was um, on about, uh, you know, releasing this. Um, I, I've only ever built one IDF project before, which was when I was first starting back and taking the hobby more seriously. And it was a buddy build with... Uh, uh, my good friend Nuno, Nuno de Costa, um, and we built the Academy Merkava or Merkava, whichever you want to say, pronounce, um, which was, I believe, back in 2016, possibly a little bit earlier. And um, at the time, I thought it was a good, looked uh, quite a good little um, job I'd done. But as you, as you sort of progress in this hobby, you sort of uh, look back at your your projects and that don't you and you think oh grief you know but uh, yeah there you go um and those of you that follow my channel will know that i released a bit of a teaser video um i've just looked on my uh, videos and it says now it's coming on to three months ago so um i was hoping to do it next after the panther build but the panther build really sort of sucked my mojo a bit so i want to just do something completely different than armor um, so I've decided to do a phantom build um, in 148 scale. However, the RDF build is going to be next. I'm definitely unless something comes along and my mojo sapped again, I'm definitely going to do start that um, RDF build. So um, it's going to be protecting the Gaza Strip or protecting the Strip or guarding the Strip. I haven't come up with a name yet. Um, so perhaps you could give us and guys um, come up with a good name for me to call the project. Um, just have a look at the teaser video. I'm not going to keep going into it now because this is about this review. But this has now come in perfect to what uh, that is. You know what I can use for that, which is great. Um, IDF armor. It always looks uh, to me like um, really dead sexy stuff you know it's uh, it's um i just love it it just looks brill it's really weathered some of it's really weathered and battered and you know it's just great to to do and and as a model it, it's quite exciting to do as well so i am really looking forward to that project uh, i have got a few extra bits in as well ready for it so uh, and i've also got to, the the sort of layout provisionally mentally planned in my head of what I want to do so right so this is a book review of um, how to paint uh, how to paint IDF tanks weathering guide um, this got models by Lucas Saramatidis, Rick Lawler, Michel Dostel, Mig Jimenez and Alain Kira oh, I even shot myself then with that bit of French although it He's probably Dutch. <laughs> yeah, well. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's a it's a lovely book. It's um, it's it's nicely uh, shiny on the front. You know, it's got it's um, A4 size, which is nice. I have noticed, um, which I thought was a bit of waste of money, to be honest. But then again, it's Meg, so um, no offence, um, Meg. But uh, if you look at this, it's got like detachable pages, and it's also got that. You know, it's it's exactly the same on the inside. So, I mean, I suppose it's a nice little touch. I mean, it's got another adver advertising of the mix stuff on the inside there, I suppose, which you sort of come to expect. Um, down the spine again, which is very annoying to me. Um, it's got it upside down again. So, I'm really, really when it comes to like me to stashing my models in in my books now, I like them to all look quite neat, and I just hate things that are the wrong way round because they look stupid on the and just me being picky I suppose but you know anyway so the spine has got it a bit upside down so if you want it the right way round and, and you book you're gonna have to turn it round. 
Uh, the number for this uh, is, let's just try and zoom in. I've got this on a different stand this time because I'm just trying something different, see if it works. So let's have a look. So um, it's a mig six one two eight, and it's in the UK version, British. Um, and then of course this is there you go. There's the spine for you. Nothing more. Um, then on the back, which is quite nice, it go it just shows you pictures of the featured builds, which is uh, very nice. So um, we got an AMX, an M60. A Sherman, a Centurion, a Merkava or Merkava, and a Doghouse. Is that the Doghouse 2, I believe? I think it is the Doghouse 2, um, the Nag Mashin. Um, and then, of course, you've got a couple of pictures down here of just a couple of uh, shots of what you have got inside the book. And then you've got your um, barcode, and then, of course, um, the Mig Gemini sign. And then one of these. I know what they are, I just never know the name of them, um, the weird things aren't they, that you can scan on your phone or something and it gives you a, a review or, or a whatever of this book. So let's have a look then, so on the inside as you turn the page like I say you've got this weird sort of extra cover and then you've got on the actual side you've got um, actual pictures of the um, some more real life pictures of what you know, you've got to see in this book. Um, on the first page you've got um, the publisher, original idea and all that type of thing. Um, one thing I like to try and read out in my um, reviews and stuff is the um, ISBN numbers because I know if you try and type these, if you can't get them up on a normal search on uh, Amazon or whatever, if you type in the ISBN it will come up uh, a lot of the time. So the ISBN number is 978-84-16949-76-2. Um, again, it's 978-84-16949-76-2. I'll put that on the description of this video uh, underneath. Uh, special thanks go to the IDF and uh, the Luigi Caretta. Must be some sort of um, guy that deals with all that type of thing. Um, you've got real reference photos, which I've noticed here. It says uh, IDF, Mario Pieri, Daniel Juglimi, Lemley, or whatever, Luigi Caretta, Shea Wagner, uh, Zev Marmorstein, Eden Briand. Michelle Oronoff, Book Void, Itamar Cohen, Shahar Sigal, Avnerev, Yov Pino, Pinais, Pinos, uh, Gardi Yampal, Alexi Rosenfeld, and Abir Sultan. I thought I'd just sort of uh, read that out because some of you in foreign countries might know these guys. Or guys that work in you know the magazines and stuff might know them guys whereas but obviously the way I've just butchered the names you probably have to have a look of again um, so here we go so in the inside here it just shows you what sort of page numbers the certain builds are on and then you cut you start with um, a bit of a summary of uh, who these two chaps are at the top here and then it goes into sort of real life uh, pictures that you've got um, very clear um, and some IDF infantry here taking cover behind a Merkava um, looks like the version I'm hoping to build uh, the Mark IV is it I believe it is the Mark IV although I can't see from here that's typical isn't it yeah the Mark IV M so yeah, you know, it goes through all information, which is nice. Good clear pictures. Some of them black and white, but the majority of them are colour, which is nice to see. Um, it goes through some uh, old pictures as well, some museum bits and that, which is nice. Um, you've also got good clear pictures and some of the inside of the interiors. I mean, not that. Apart from the um, the main kit that they released. Uh, the Axerit, where they've got the interior on that, I 
don't think there's any others that I can recall that have got interiors for um, you know and, and no companies have released apart from obviously aftermarket companies with resin and that that you can attach inside the vehicles but I can't recall any um, thing else one thing I have noticed here which I saw on a uh, some modelers build the other week and I thought oh he hasn't painted it but um, it must be right uh, a lot of the aerials I've noticed on the Mercavas Merc down here are white that's quite interesting to see because it just looks unpainted to me but there I mean you can see there it's um, the white bits there but yeah so um, more white aerials there so uh, yeah so you've got like um, infant, uh, good clear pictures of them uh, uh, infantry uh, sorry infantry and paratroopers and that going on um, exercise and some actual um, real life uh, infantry war pictures this is one picture a vehicle that I thought was quite uh, cool that I, I saw going through this it's called the um, Guardian not Guardian the Guardian it's an armoured um, little vehicle and it's it's unmanned um, which I thought was quite uh, cool actually so and it's like um, it says G4 on it so I hope they don't bloody run it because they'll be understaffed and god knows whatever else um, sorry did I say that out loud um, yeah so and then you've got like some infantry uh, some tank uh, guys here the tank crew just having a bit of a break which is nice and then we come into the actual models and um, the first one is the TACOM 135th scale um, AMX 1375 um, and it's MIG himself that's done and weathered this one however it's actually built and constructed by the actual TACOM staff um, so you, you know it's good clear pictures as you can see um, and it starts it, one thing I've noticed about this book is it starts from the bare plastic so whereas a lot of books you find say they've got talk through guides and all that type of thing you know a lot of them start from sort of the base coat so you've already got that down but whereas this here it starts completely from the plastic so you've got pre-shading and, and all that type of stuff which I think is really nice um, as you flip through you can see the maskings done um, okay he's using the, the MIG products which you know um, you, can't, you can't blame him fair play to him it says product um, it says book I suppose at the end of the day I do like a lot of their weathering products and AK I, I mix between the two or I mix my own, you know. I will say one thing I did I did swap a few couple of years ago to some a lot of the MIG paints. Um they didn't work for me, however once I did a, quite a bit of research on them and, and practiced I did get the hang of them. But again, it's just a lot of faff for, for my liking of painting, and that's why I stick to Tam here at the minute. So yeah, um, good clear pictures again, as I said, all the way through. And I mean, this is nearly about 20-odd pages now. It's gone on, on one first build. Gives you bits of uh, aftermarket bits you can get to add on, like, the, the tie-downs of the aerials and stuff. Um, one little idea I've noticed which I thought was really good um, is um, let's just try and zoom in on a little bit here I don't know if you can see here I quite like this idea um, you've got obviously your, your stretch sprue as your aerial or your guitar string or your, your um, copper wiring whichever you use or the kit piece and um, what they've done is they've got a bit of metal tubing um, and they've cut it into place and just slid the aerial through so it gives it a, an extra bit of detail look and I just thought that was a, a great little idea to, to try so I'm definitely going to try that on the IDF build I think um, and because like I say after all this uh, hobby is all about learning isn't it and trying new things so you know it's good to try different things out um, so yeah let's go a bit further on um, we come on to the Mercury Mark 1 the hybrid which um, I think this is the one I picked out that it didn't tell you which kit it was it's by Rick Lawler anyway um, it's going to be obviously either the, the cheapy Tamiya one the Tacon one or the Hobby Boss one I would say or the Academy one of course which I built but I don't know 
Anyway, it might say through there, but after a quick glance, I didn't notice what it said. But there you go. And it doesn't say at the front, neither um, of the index, what sort of kit manufacturers they are. Um, the ball and chain armour at the back, it gives you a good uh, sighting into what that's like and how to do that. Uh, and then we come on to a piece from Lebanon in 1982, um, the Magach. Um, that to me... That looks like that. That's a lovely kit. That to me looks like the, the new dragon. One of the latest dragon ones. I'm sorry I'm talking a bit quiet, guys. It's like um, five past five in the morning, so I just thought I'd do a review out the way because it's, it's at the minute I'm off for the week, so it's my very first day. So I thought I'd start as I mean to go on and get a couple of videos done. Um, so yeah, here we go. So um, and then we come on to something else that we haven't seen yet: the burnishing fluids, which is nice to see. Using just a normal toothbrush and a makeup brush to sort of put the pigments on and water it and make it away. Um, and then he's coming into with some bricks and that, which he's crushing up there, which I thought was quite good. Um, nice clear pictures again. You can see how he's using what I, I like to do. I like to add um, some extra wiring onto the machine guns at the front. Um, the Abrams I did. Um, I added a few extra wires onto it. It just gives it a little bit of a... It's amazing how just a simple little wire can make all that difference on, on a model kit. You know, it's just pleasing for the eye to see. Um, a bit of a, an identification tarp. And then you've got what I do quite like is this here. Um, let's zoom in on that. You've got a um, sort of aftermarket sort of skull thing, which I thought was quite um, good. I don't know if you can see that. I thought that was uh, really good. Um, so it just gives you like just some extra ideas, doesn't it? Things you can add on to your, your, your kits that you know you don't think of, or you, you know, I just think it's really good these type of books. Now we come on to this one. Now this is primarily what I bought this book for. Um, is this kit? Uh, this is the actually the one I'm going to be building, which is the Tiger Models version. Um, and a couple of useful useful tips I've got already. It's by M Mitchell Dostal, and um, he has said that the um, armor, the slat armor around the um, the sort of main turret part, is uh, the kit parts are quite not as good as the photo etch parts. So I might look at trying to source, he says an ET, the ET model ones are quick, he's used on this. So I think you know, I might try and resource them and see how much they are. I'm sure Edward do one or something. And I know it's a lot of extra work. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of PE, I must admit, but you know, if it adds it on. Um, here's one thing I like, cause I, I do, I've done this on a few models now. He uses a normal um, crayon. I try and use the chalk crayons uh, that you can buy. It just I just feel you get more of an authentic look. But you know that's my input. And that's my impression. But this this looks really good. You know. Um, so yeah, I mean you're going through again. He's adding uh, pigments and he's adding um, you know your sort of uh, your washes and your um, your nature effects that you can get from the already mixed from Meg and AK. He's actually shooting them through his airbrush. Um, I have done that before and um, you do get quite good effects from it actually but it just takes a lot of cleaning um, so let's just flip through again he's adding his chipping and his scratches, his rusting he's got a few bits of aftermarket up here like oil canisters and, and tarps and that um, then he's going on to his burnishing fluids um, but I don't know if you've noticed guys all the way through it's very clear pictures and another thing I like is um, They've got numbers here, but they've also got numbers in the pictures, so they correspond with the description. Because sometimes in magazines, if you read them or in books, you you get pictures, but you don't get the numbers that correspond with them. So you sort of does that sort of mean that, and you know, can be a bit confusing. Um, then we come to towards the end of that build, um, and then we come up to the model gallery. Um, so you do, it's got sort of a an interview with this Alan Kira. Uh, and he goes through bits of when he was in the the, the armed services over there. Um, looks like he's got family members in there too. Um, some old pictures that he's taken himself, which is nice. Um, oh, and that's a good thing as well. And then we come on to 
uh, I take it we'll be coming on to yeah each build that is just that we've just seen and he goes through exactly what materials they've used and which company with the names on as well which is nice so you can sort of if you if you go back you think oh but yeah that's a great idea how he's done that what's he used for that you know you can think oh right okay great so you can have a look and try and source that yourself I think that's a great um, little idea oh I like this M113 look at that with the little with the armor around the side that's wicked hmm I might have found a future build there guys um oh I used the mighty M109 Oof. So yeah, as you can see, so you've got plenty of uh, stuff to get into and dig your teeth into. And then at the back, you've got your uh, he's advertising his encyclopedias, which in my opinion, I mean, you do get good size uh, books, but I mean, they're a bit expensive for my liking. Um, and then of course, you've got the, the page again, which you could use as a bookmark, but it'd be a shame to crease it up. And that's it. So um, this retailed in Britain, I think I got this from emodels.co.uk I think it was £18.99 um, I have seen this for as much as £25 I think emodels is one of the cheapest places for books at the minute um, so that's where I got this from uh, I'm sure you'll find it cheaper around the world somewhere but um, I've just been waiting for it for so long with emodels being down the road it was just there for me so Right guys, there you go, so there's the first book review of the week, hopefully, um, that I've wanted to do, so I've just got to get one more done now, unless I purchase any more books. Um, so yeah, there you go, so there's the How to Paint RDF Tanks um, by Mig Jimenez, Armour of Mig Weathering Guide. Hope you're well, hope you'll stay safe, and I hope you had a great Easter, and may the Force be with you. See you guys, bye.